Hi, everybody. So good to be with you once again today. Thanks so much for tuning in for these encouraging words together. I so appreciate the times we have throughout the day where we can pause from whatever we're doing in order to just draw our hearts together before the Lord as we listen to his word, as we ask for his help to put it into practice, as we lift to him our needs and concerns, and as we give him thanks for his love, his kindness. As we submit our lives to the Lord, we can know that his provision, his care, his love is certainly something we can all avail ourselves of and experience afresh in any moment. There is always hope and encouragement to be found as we put our trust in the Lord. Thanks so much for tuning in today. I want to share a verse today from an Old Testament book, one of our wisdoms book, uh, wisdom books, the, the book of Ecclesiastes. That's a name we don't quite often hear. Ecclesiastes is um, an English translation of a Greek title given to an Old Testament book. It means uh, from the teacher, or really from the one who has called us together to learn. And it comes from the opening line of Ecclesiastes, which says, These are the words of the teacher, the son of David, the king of Jerusalem. And uh, we typically understand that to mean from King Solomon himself, someone the Bible says to be the wisest man. God gifted him with special wisdom, the wisest man to have ever lived. And it's interesting when you read Ecclesiastes, I would say more than interesting, almost depressing, because the writer points us to really the folly to be found in every aspect of life. It even starts out declaring that everything is meaningless, and it states it three times just as the book gets started. There are 12 chapters in that book, and all of them reflect the kind of folly of living this life apart from serving and honoring God. When we do things on our own, that ultimately it amounts to nothing. Solomon will write about how, you know, it's it's one thing to have knowledge and wisdom, and that seems to help for a while. But in the end, you just end up like anybody else that comes along. And we all die. We all pass away. What, what difference do our lives really make? And essentially, the book of Ecclesiastes is a lament about how empty life can be when we try to live it apart from God. That in the end, no matter what we do, it just doesn't seem to amount to much. That all begins to change finally in his conclusion. And in the last letter, he reminds people of the difference and the importance of coming back to honor God with your life. That really the things that matter most are those things that are eternal. Those things that are accomplished in us as we open our hearts to the Lord, as we trust in him, as we depend on him, as we walk in obedience to him. And so in chapter 12, the final chapter, it begins, and I'm just going to read the first half of the first verse of Ecclesiastes chapter 12. This is what Solomon writes. He says, Remember your creator in the days of your youth, before the days of trouble come. It's an interesting line. Remember your creator in the days of your youth before the days of trouble come. What's he mean? Well, the first 11 chapters will point out that trouble comes to everybody, that there is a time for every season under heaven. You know, there's a time to be born, there's a time to die. He'll go on in that third chapter to talk about all the different situations that will and will likely befall any of us. And there's a sense to each life we experience trouble. Jesus, of course, would say something similar. He'd say, um, um, seek the Lord today. Each day has enough trouble of its own. This idea that there are heartaches and issues that come to every life. Some days have joy. Some days are harder, aren't they? And we've all can look back at our lives and and recognize that. So there is there are tough times that come to every person. And so the writer acknowledges that here. Solomon acknowledges that here. Um, but then he calls us to prepare ourselves for it. You know, um, I have vacationed some years along the coast, North Carolina coast, 
Um, I've been to the Florida coast. I've had a chance to visit the California coast and places where I've stayed longer. Like uh, for many years, we, we traveled to Emerald Isle along the outer banks of North Carolina and we would, we would uh, rent there and we would often go in with other families or sometimes extended members of our own family. We'd all rent a house together right on the beach. Linda and I are beach people. If we get a chance to go do that, of course, I have to watch the sun and all that and and, uh, wear lots of sunscreen and kind of cover up. But I just love being near the water. Um, But the issue near the water, if you live there, is occasionally you have bad storms. And uh, there was one, more than one year, actually, when we had friends, um, we had friends that would go to the North Carolina coast every year, and some years we'd go with them. But a couple of times when we didn't go, they would have to evacuate because of a hurricane that was coming along. And of course, we've all heard those stories of various places around our country and the world, and we've seen the pictures of the great devastation. Of course, last year, the whole Sanibel Island area of Florida devastated because of hurricanes. And so people do their best to prepare. They have special storm shutters that go over the windows. The houses are built on uh, stilts. They're above the, 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 the ground so that if there's a rush of seawater, it helps protect those homes. People do their best to be prepared. And I mention all of that to say is that's kind of what Solomon has in mind here when he tells us to remember our creator in the days of our youth. What's he saying? Don't wait until trouble comes to get connected to the Lord. Take the time now to honor him, to seek him, to develop a relationship with him. He doesn't just remember, think about, I'm sorry, he's not just saying think about your creator while you're young. That idea of remembering your creator, the one who made you, the Lord above, the idea of remembering him from a biblical standpoint is know him, get to know him, embrace him. Don't just acknowledge him as creator and then live your own way, but choose to submit your life to the one who loves you most, who made you from the beginning, who has a destiny in mind for each of us, and let's honor him first and foremost. And if we will remember him like that, if we will honor him, if we will choose to draw close to him as the scripture calls us to do, then when the days of trouble come, we have a resource. We're not alone. We have an opportunity to face that trouble, whatever it is, with a sense of knowing God is with us because we have chosen to align ourselves with him. Life has hard moments for everyone. And what a terrible thing it is to face what feels like incredible or almost uh, insurmountable odds uh, with our own strength, feeling like we have to bear this burden alone carry the weight of it on our back. Some people, they just break. They can't do it. And none of us are meant to face the hardships of life by ourselves. And so the writer of Ecclesiastes, after spending 11 chapters talking about the folly and the hardships of trying to live one's life apart from God, calls us back, each and every one of us, that we would remember our Creator in the days of our youth. Well, what do we do then if we feel like our youth has come and gone? He's not saying it's too late. What he's saying essentially is the sooner you do this, the better. And how true that is. And, uh, you know, someone that tries to prepare their home for a coming storm within an hour of the storm's arrival is in just worse shape than the one that's done their best and planned ahead of time. Um, even, you know, considering the kind of foundation they would build their house on. The more advanced planning that goes into it, the easier it is to be prepared. And that's the sense here. You and I, God's intention is that we would be prepared for every hardship that comes along. It doesn't mean we can foresee them all. It doesn't mean we can always anticipate the twists and turns that lie before us. But it does mean that if we will remember our Creator, if we will focus on our relationship with Him, then no matter what comes or when it comes, we don't have to face it by ourselves. The Lord is with us because we have chosen to align with Him. Now, if you've lived a life apart from God and you're facing a storm, still turn to Him. Make the most of the opportunities you have of calling out to the Lord and, uh, and, and making him the Lord of your life. But the encouragement here is don't wait for trouble to come. 
Take the time now to seek Him, to know Him, to let His grace and power be present in your life. And out of the confidence that comes from knowing we have a Creator who loves us and who has a destiny for us, as we trust in Him, we can face tomorrow with a sense of confidence and peace. My prayer is that you would experience that confidence and that peace even right now today. So whether you feel like you're in trouble today or troubles around the corner or whether you've, you're in a, in a good moment, this is the time to seek the Lord. And out of the strength of the relationship that you can find in him, there is always hope for tomorrow. With that thought, let's pray today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the truths of your word that really guide us well that give us such direction. Help us, Lord, to take your words to heart. Today, we choose to remember you. We choose to honor you. Help our words and our actions, Lord, to be that which demonstrates our devotion to you. That we would not be people who just talk a good game, but people that more importantly, Lord, live out a faith and a love that is genuine and real as you work in us by your, your grace. We turn to you today. We acknowledge you, Jesus, as Lord and Savior. We call out to you. Help us to know you more. Cause your word to come alive in us. May we practice the disciplines of what it means to seek you. May we be people of prayer and people that are devoted to your word and people determined to put it into right living, Father God, that you might be honored in all we say or do. And I thank you, Lord, that as we turn to you, we can count, Lord, on your gracious, um, not just simply oversight, but your companionship. The fact that you hold us close and walk with us every step of our journey. Lord, if there are those that are in trouble even now today, I pray that you would strengthen them by your grace. We turn to you today. And I thank you, Lord, that you always take us as we are. You never turn us away. When we come to you honestly and openly, looking to you, Jesus, as Lord and Savior, you meet us where we are and you begin to transform us from the inside out. Bring hope where it's needed today. Bring courage and encouragement to the uh, folks where it seems to be lacking. Help us to know that you're with us. And may we live in such a way that our lives demonstrate we are a people that remember our Creator. We honor you. Thank you for working in our hearts today. Thank you for being with us in the time of trouble. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I'm always encouraged. I'm always uplifted. Just talking through the scripture with you. You know, as we do that with one another, there's a strengthening that comes to our hearts. I encourage you, whether you're eating a meal with someone or gathered over coffee or or just finding a way to connect someone, never be afraid to share the difference of what Christ is making in you or things you're learning from the scripture as you face uh, the various trials of life. As we share those truths and principles with one another, we are strengthened and others are encouraged. I encourage you to take the time to do that whenever you get the chance. So uh, I appreciate so much you joining us for these encouraging words to, to, together. Here at Friendship Village, we work hard to show you these videos three times a day. This video will begin at 4.30 in the afternoon. It'll repeat at 8 o'clock in the evening, and then once again, 8 o'clock the following morning. We share these encouraging word videos three times, a, uh, I'm sorry, five times a week, every day, Monday through Friday. But you can always watch them online on YouTube. Just check in at youtube.com backslash then the at symbol FVC Chaplain. And not only will you find these encouraging word videos, you'll find under the live tab um, recordings of our services, our Bible studies, memorials, and more. If you're watching online, if you know someone that could use some encouragement, please consider sending them the link to today's video. You can subscribe to these videos and just get notifications in your YouTube feed when new ones come by clicking on the circle above or on the box below then to see the, the ones in our past history. So good to be with you today. Thank you so much for tuning in. God bless. We'll see you next time.